Hello everyone and welcome to a short presentation on how to get started in Amos. This is a video uh, most suitable to be watched in the first or second week of an Amos project. I will talk about how to get to your requirements, how to think about it, how to structure them. Requirements are usually the task of a product owner, but in the end they are important for the whole team. So if you will, you can work together. Software developers should help product owners. A product owner in Scrum in general, but also certainly in Amos, is a technical product owner. In large companies, you may also have strategic product owners who do PowerPoint. That's not an Amos uh, product owner. An Amos product owner is technical, they need to understand the application domain, they need to be able to be pretty precise in what needs to be done, and hence they need to understand the technology. Uh, they do not have to implement things, but they need to understand the technology well enough to create requirements that make sense for software developers. So let me get started here getting started in amos now i'm taking my favorite flowers example wild side um, which is a photo rating application you may remember it from class in it uh, as a user you are shown as a visitor to a website you're shown flower photos and then you can rate them on a, a number of 0 to 10 uh, and it is how you give feedback to those people flower enthusiasts who uploaded uh, these photos let's assume there's a vision here for the um, flowers application web application and it's a web service that brings together flower uh, enthusiasts um, to show the most beautiful flowers well, most beautiful flowers that makes uh, some sense if you like flowers you want to show them you want to talk about them so there's all kinds of functionality you might want so what could the requirements be and again we're just getting started so there's nothing and what do you have to do uh, if there's nothing well maybe you want to think about uh, technology as a first step um, not as the only first step, but certainly you need to think about what libraries, etc. to choose. Um, you're designing an architecture, you're required to provide an architecture sketch in Amos. So let's assume you decide or I decide here for flowers that it's a simple three, uh, three tier architecture with a database, a domain model and a user interface on the domain model. So pretty straightforward, review database needs. So and then select a database that's an open source database. So it's pretty straightforward. Is a relational database okay? Should it be a NoSQL? Will you use some? Um, as a consequence, you might choose uh, Postgres or something, or QL or something else. Um, similarly, review domain model needs. Yeah, you need to implement flowers, uh, or classes for flowers and users, etc. Domain model needs. So um, select a domain model framework. You need some technology to work with. Um, and that needs to be decided. And finally, we have a third tier here, the user interface review user interface needs um, select a user interface framework so these are simple basic first steps you can see i split things into review and then decide of course you can make it one task really um, but i do think conceptually it helps to split reviewing something identifying criteria from using those criteria to make a decision. Um, you can also see there are three different decisions to be made here and they are probably independent so they could be run in parallel so there's no dependency or not much of a dependency between database domain model and user interface. However 
you can only select say a user interface at least the way i describe it here if you decided on the what the criteria are the needs are so um, you can parallelize these three things but the two steps within each thing should be in sequence and now let's get started with the functionality um, it's quite basic if there's an empty website then maybe you need users so allow for user registration um, so a user can register that's some function you need so there's got to be user accounts and uh, a function a button where it says register then if you now have users then maybe provide a login provide user login so you can see how here I have this at the top level of the bullet list and then under it I have provide user login. There is no user login possible if you don't have users registered or don't have user accounts at all. So there's basically dependency here. Provide user login can only be done once you have user registration. Um, another simple feature then obviously is provide user logout. Okay, so login, logout are independent of each other in terms of implementation. Once you have registered users, um, you can uh, can implement login like logout. So another thing then is we need user photo. We, we need flower photos. Uh, so we want to get to flower photos, and flower photos are uploaded by users. So um, users can have a user photo gallery and um, a user photo gallery would be something like um, okay let's put it like here allow user to upload uh, flower photos or oh, let's just make it photos um, so it's probably galleries so more than one so allow you can split it allow a user to upload one photo for a gallery or maybe you just make it a collection of photos right away and i just chose a name gallery for it so allow for metadata so they should perhaps be able to say it's a rose or it's a tulip uh, allow user to delete photos seems obvious allow user to hide photo so assuming assuming that a user can upload a photo uh, then it's immediately visible to other users of the of the platform of the service perhaps but they may want to hide it or maybe you decide first they are hidden and only when switched on when switched visible they become visible so that's straightforward here and there's much more you could do, but we're just trying to get started. So that's most basic here. You could also say allow user to have a profile. Um, allow user to upload an avatar. All right. Um, allow user to provide social data. What's their Twitter account or their website? Something like it. Um, uh, allow user to name favorite flower. As a reminder, these things, if they're on the same level, they are of equal importance, not, not necessarily of equal importance, but they are independent of each other. So you need to have a user profile and then you can have any of these here, which allows for parallel work by developers. And um, that is what the most basic things that a user might want to do. So the purpose of the website is to, well, one aspect most certainly is to show these photos. So show random photo on home page. Why am I getting to this only now if it's the primary purpose? Uh, it's kind of implied that if you don't have users, and they have not uploaded any photo and you cannot show any photo. So probably you have to first implement user functionality, having a user account, allowing them to upload photos, and then can you move on to show random photo. 
So in terms of prioritization, you have to do this, allow for user registration, allow user to upload photos, and then you can start on this, jumping over having a profile, not so important if this is where you want to get to. So show random photo on, uh, on homepage, maybe on homepage or some other page you decide. Key is that visitor um, rate a photo. For showing a photo doesn't mean it's being rated yet. So that is um, just fine. But you want that uh, one to uh, 10 rating scale be available for each photo. So let a visitor rate the photo. Maybe also let a visitor, let visitor flag a photo. Maybe it's not a flower photo. Maybe it's something else that doesn't belong here. So a user can flag the photo. Which implies that maybe we have to think about types of users. So we have a user registration here. There's implied here there's a visitor. So what's a visitor? A visitor is just any user. Yeah, it's just any user. But now if we have photos flagged, what does that mean? And who's going to decide on it? So maybe you need to add moderator role. May I call it a role? These are decisions you're making. Uh, and maybe a registered user can also be a moderator. So you want to add a moderator role. That is straightforward, doesn't have any functionality yet, but you can mark some users as a moderator. And then they get a moderation queue, moderation queue. What's a moderation queue? Well, it's a queue or a collection of photos that have been flagged by a visitor for a reason. So show moderation queue. Uh, let uh, moderator, let moderator, let moderator review a photo from queue. Yep. So they browse the queue, they choose a photo, and they review it. And then they uh, let moderator flag. Uh, and then they agree or disagree. If they disagree, uh, and think it's a proper photo, then they just reset the flag and the uh, photo is visible again. Uh, so there was an implication here that flagged photos become invisible. Um, but if they are unflagged, they become visible again. Or maybe um, it actually was a valid flagging of an inappropriate photo. So that user who uploaded the inappropriate photo may now need to be flagged, which implies that um, there is an administrator, administrator role, and they have something similar to what a moderator has in terms of photos. They have uh, show flagged user um, uh, queue. So they get notified about or they get shown a queue where there are users who upload inappropriate content. content. So they can show it, uh, they can show that queue and then maybe they need functionality let administrator suspend a user let an administrator reinstate reinstate a user maybe you communicate it on the side by email etc etc um here comes all kinds of other soft uh, other functionality like um, let administrator shut down system and so forth. So what I've done here is set up a couple of requirements. Um, I kind of obviously knew the application. Usually you wouldn't be that fast, but it's very straightforward when you want to get started. Uh, think about the technology you want to use and add the functionality. Get fairly specific, get small. All of these things need to be each of these line items here, bullet items, should be doable by one developer within uh, one sprint. And um, the structure here implies what depends on what. So make sure that you also have enough of these uh, available in, um, uh, in your product backlog, etc. So this hierarchical structure is not how your product backlog looks like. That's just a linear list. So you have to take these here and you have to allow for user registration, provide user login, and maybe then the next uh, and allow 
use a to upload photos and maybe then the next highly prioritized item in the product backlog is this year rather than that you know? and uh, because this seems more important this is a logic a structure hierarchy of requirements in the product backlog you serialize these requirements uh, so that they are put in order for being worked on and that's really it um, thank you for your attention and see you in class